The question of, what was the best German tank of the Second World War, is popular among military history enthusiasts. On the other hand, best is a relative term that means different things to different people. Many people will probably think of the Tiger and Panther, when asked what was the most technically capable tank. However, a lesser-known tracked combat vehicle, the Sturmgeschütz III, was arguably more significant in terms of impact. The German Tiger and Panther tanks were iconic, but neither was produced in sufficient numbers to have a significant strategic impact. Nonetheless, they were far more potent and qualitatively superior to anything the Allies had until the end of the war. Despite their omnipotence, the Tigers were never produced in large enough numbers to have a significant impact. It was mostly used in small numbers and when the Wehrmacht was retreating, rather than advancing. In reality, it was designed to be an assault tank. The Tiger's main flaw is that only 1,347 were ever made. The Tiger II was much more formidable, but production was limited to only 489 units. Perhaps a more interesting question, in evaluating Second World War German tanks is, what was the most significant design? Here significant means, which tank had the greatest impact in battle? The Panther was in some ways superior to the Tiger. It had a better iron triangle balance than the Tiger, because it had a higher power-to-weight ratio, providing improved cross-country mobility. However, early Panther models proved to be so unreliable that they were a combat liability. Not until the Panther Model G debuted in early 1944, did it begin to have a significant impact. By the end of the war, total Panther production had reached around 6,000, with less than 3,000 of the Model G variant produced. In comparison to Tiger and Panther tanks, the Soviets produced 84,000 T-34s, while 49,000 Shermans rolled off American assembly lines. Military historians generally consider the T-34 and Sherman to be more significant than any German tank, because they could be mass-produced at a lower cost. While absolute numbers were often the deciding factor between victory and defeat, they also made equipment support simpler and less costly. As a result, in terms of overall impact, production volumes and supportability are important additional evaluation criteria. The Panzer III and Panzer IVs of the Wehrmacht were more significant than the Tiger and Panther, because they were also produced in greater quantities. However, overall manufacturing was noticeably lower than that of American or Russian tanks. A total of 8,553 Panzer IVs and 5,774 Panzer IIIs were built. The Panzer IV's technical capabilities were mostly comparable to those of the T-34, KV-1, Sherman, Churchill, and Cromwell tanks it faced in combat, but because to a mix of well-trained crews, successful strategies, and enough numbers to create a blitzkrieg effect, it played a crucial role in a remarkable number of campaign victories, during the early stages of the war. The Sturmgeschütz III, or Stug, was the most extensively produced German combat vehicle of the Second World War. It was the only other German tank, along with the Panzer IV, to be continuously built from 1939 until 1945, with 10,086 being made. The Stug was a tank, that wasn't really a tank. 
It was designed as an assault gun to support attacking troops with direct fire, a role it excelled at in Poland, France, and Russia. It was specifically instructed not to be used as a tank destroyer, because it was thought to be too vulnerable. Instead, it was to be utilized to deal with machine gun nests, pillboxes, and fortifications. Because the assault guns were used to equip the assault artillery batteries, they were under the direct command of the German Army's artillery, rather than the Panzerwaffe. Without a turret, the Stug could only slew to the left or right, using its tracks to rotate its gun. It couldn't fire while moving. It also had thinner armor than the Panzer III and IV. Overall, the Stug should not have been such a huge success. However, by the end of the war, it had destroyed an estimated 30,000 Russian tanks, more than any other German combat vehicle, and more than any Allied tank type. Although the assault gun's primary role evolved from assault artillery to anti-tank weapon, these units were still under the command of the artillery. As a result, the Stug crews were gunners rather than Panzertruppen. The Stug 3, Stug 4, and Stug 42 fully enclosed assault guns, served as the backbone of such units. The Gross Deutschland Division Stug units claimed 44 T-34 kills in Kharkov, in February 1943, while an equal number of Tiger units only managed 30. In the same year in Leningrad, a Stug battalion, Aptilin 226, equipped with 41 Stug 3s, destroyed 221 Russian T-34 and KV-1 tanks, with only 13 losses. After Kursk, the Russian situation changed, forcing the Wehrmacht to take a defensive stance. The Stug 3 was forced to be used as a tank destroyer due to the circumstances, rather than as an assault gun. Despite not being designed for that specific role, the Stug performed admirably in the anti-tank role due to its improved weaponry. Their 75mm L24 short barrel gun was eventually replaced by a 75mm L43, and later by the more powerful L48 gun. These proved to be more than capable of destroying most enemy targets, at ranges greater than 1 km. Despite concerns about vulnerability, the design requirement called for a vehicle height of less than a man standing, resulting in a lower profile than other German tanks. It was perfect for ambushing enemy tanks, because it was easier to conceal, and presented a smaller target to enemy gunners. The Stug was the simplest and cheapest tank type built by the Wehrmacht and SS Panzer divisions, between 1939 and 1945, costing 70,000 Reichsmarks, whereas a Panzer IV cost 100,000 Reichsmarks, and a Tiger, 300,000 Reichsmarks. Since the Stug III was built on the same tested chassis as the Panzer III, it was simple to support and maintain, because spare parts were widely available. Transferring production to Stug III, when Panzer III production was halted, wasn't a problem. It was simple mechanically, making repairs simple. The training was also simple. The vehicle, which included a commander, a driver, a gunner, and a loader, was easy to use and was well-liked by its crews. Crucially, the Stug III possessed additional advantages, that are frequently overlooked. In 
It mounted the 75mm L48 gun, which was too large to fit within the turret ring of the Panzer III. Despite being less powerful than the Tiger's 88mm cannon, it could still defeat the frontal armor of the majority of Allied tanks, making it more than adequate for the tank destroyer role. Compared to the Panzer IV, the Stug III had better optics, allowing it to engage targets more quickly, accurately, and over greater distances. These were coaxially mounted, not above the gun, making it simpler to acquire and track targets. The Stug III had good armor where it was most needed, across the frontal arc, despite having lower overall armor protection than other tanks. The Stug III weighed less, and was more agile on and off the road, because it lacked a turret and the same overall thickness of armor as the Panzer III. Because it was lighter, it put less strain on its drivetrain, and thus broke down less frequently than other German tanks. It had the highest availability rating, of any tracked combat vehicle in Germany. Its low profile due to the lack of a turret made it an excellent ambush tank, and the fact that it was less expensive to build than a regular tank, made it incredibly cost-effective. The advantage of the turretless design, was that they took less time to produce and then get them to the battlefield. The Stug III was built in greater numbers, as it was recognized as a useful battlefield asset. Despite its many qualities, the Stug never achieved the iconic status of the Tiger and Panther. It was plain-looking, unsophisticated, and less capable than its tank cousins, but it was responsible for a disproportionately high number of tank kills, in comparison to other more capable German tanks. In reality, German assault and self-propelled guns actually eclipsed the Panzers. They were cheaper and faster to build, and by the end of the war, they had frequently supplanted tanks within Panzer battalions. In summary, the technical features, production numbers, combat performance, and service longevity of the Stug combined to create a vehicle that no other tank or tank destroyer has ever matched. This does not mean the Stug was flawless. On the contrary, it had flaws, but it functioned sufficiently well, to be incredibly useful. Due to a lack of tanks, they were frequently called upon to fill the role of panzers. They were ideal for the massive defensive battles fought on the Eastern Front, as well as in Italy and Normandy, and ultimately they were instrumental in delaying the defeat of Hitler's Nazi Germany. If you have liked the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.